Welcome to this session. It's the first of its kind, and uh, thanks to our colleagues uh, who have uh, painstakingly do you know do all this organizing work and all that. Um, I'm here to share with you uh, the types of games that we can use in our classrooms. All right, and these types of games have evolved starting from games which I used with my children when they were young, they play SimCity and all that, so all the CD, commercially available games, all the way to the latest game which is designed and customized just for our students to create a virtual experience for them. Okay? And all these games are things that you can take away. At the end of this session, if you have brought your thumb drive, you can go and copy my template change the questions to your history questions, geography questions, and you can play the game with your students. All right, so it is a game, yes, that what I'm talking about, let's build an authoring community, all right, to unleash the power of creativity. Okay, so some of these games are very, very simple. You look at it and say, I, yeah, PowerPoint only, my, I also can do. Yes, but the time taken to do the hyperlinks and all that is quite a lot of efforts put in. And rather than somebody spending three hours putting in the efforts, you must also share this three hours effort and multiply it with everybody else. And that's what I mean by building a network learning community. All right, because the template is the same. You spend three hours, the template is the same. You just keep changing the questions. All right? So that's what we want to do today. Right. Um, we will, today, we will look at the types of games. All right? And then, how, why do we use them? I've got to get in the buy-in. Because a lot of teachers will think, oh, yeah, games are no time. I've got GC, GC all level syllabus to cover. But you've got to tell the teachers that this is a chicken and egg problem. If you are not going to get them so excited about learning your subject, when you talk and talk and talk in class, what they look at you is they are thinking you are just doing yeah, 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 yeah. All right, nothing. All right. So what we want to do is to engage our learners so that the learners will enjoy learning. So not only do I show you the types of games, I also show you. Uh, why we use them, how we use them, and how do we create them. The how do we create them can be a three hour workshop, but they only give me one hour air time. So I'll try and, and uh, speed up, and uh, at any point that you feel that I'm going like a Shinkansen, stop me. Alright, so let's carry on. Now, like I say, we can start off with commercially available games. What are commercially available games? Any one of you have got experience playing commercially available games? Let's shout out the answer. Any? What do you play? Commercially available games. Come on and conquer, yes? I bone. Anybody else? We no? Games. Yeah? We? We? Okay. SimCity. You know, you know, once upon a time, SimCity, all right, Tycoon, Roller Coaster Tycoons. All these games are actually quite fun. And why do the kids get so addicted playing it? Because there is a plot behind it, there are little excitement there, there's a little bit of gratification in achieving something. So let's, that's what we want to build into a game, right? While you get them excited with all the uh, colorful uh, animations and all that, but at the same time, there's a sense of achievement. And you notice that they actually line it such that it builds slowly. And by the time you get there, you feel, wow, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to perfect the score. And then they bring you up to the next level and the next level. All right. So what we do is we use a lot of CD games. For my subject, which is basically a business uh, subject, we have lots out there. I have things like Diner Dash, I have things like Sushi Go Around to teach customer service, to teach uh, certain parts about customer service, presentation, marketing and all that. But if you don't have, don't panic. Actually, there are a lot out there for uh, history, geography. I've seen a lot, all right, loads. Okay, so after that, we'll look at how we can do resource building. But let's carry on, okay? Um, like this is uh, my subtract, which is the elements of business skills is offered to sec three and four students in secondary schools. All right, we actually started only two years ago. Last year was the first batch that set for the GCN level exam. But you know, normal tech kids are really, really um, uh, 
uh, quite kinesthetic, quite visual. So you can't engage them, you can't keep them in the class learning what you have to deliver in order that they can then be motivated enough to want to prepare for the GCM level exam. So we do have lots of different uh, strategies to use with them and of course game is the most important. So if you look at this game, this is actually a commercially available game. Anybody recognize it? I'm not paid a commission to promote it, I shall not tell you what it is. <laughs> yeah, so actually because we realize there are more tech kids, alright, to them teaching centered learning is boring. They are not motivated by text-based activities. All right. I think we all recognize that their competence, uh, their, their English proficiency level is rather not quite there. So they have problems with this. And of course, all of us agree that they have short attention spans. We too, right? Okay. Kinesthetics learners, so therefore, they are more interested in hands-on activities. So we try to use games to use it as a tool in learning. Now, we don't... Okay, you turn on the computer, Dyna Dash, I'll let you play for one period and then we discuss. No. What I always tell my trainees is, give them five minutes trigger. Then they play, play, play for five minutes, they get so excited, you stop them. Come, let's come forward here. We will now discuss what were the key learning points from that game. So we always do that and let them play at home if they want to. Alright? Um, yeah, these are examples of uh, what we do with the games and these are exactly what I'm teaching them. All right, customer service. All right, this is part of our retailing as well as our marketing um, courses. So, like for example, a typical lesson that I use games will be: I'll start off with a trigger activity about, "Hey, we are setting up a restaurant. So, what do we need?" Then, as the students shout the answers, we'll do a word splash. It can be just on a whiteboard, big chart, whatever. And we go on to introduce them to the marketing activities, which I use a graphic organizer, and then. We let them play Diner Dash or Delicious 2. Alright? If you don't know what these are, Google it, type Delicious 2, type Diner Dash, or go yeah. Try that. Okay, it's actually quite fun. And after which, I will give them a quiz. And in this quiz, it's an online quiz. Okay, so after playing the game, they go on to do the quiz, and then they can then make a, uh, get together to discuss what they've learned, and they come up with their observation list. All right. So what I'll do then is that I am using a lot of all these hands-on and I keep switching. Every 10 minutes, they have something else to do. I keep switching every 10 minutes so that they will then not be bored and they have got to be on task. Because if they are not on task, they will not be able to do that last bit. All right? So this is another example where I use YouTube as a trigger activity to customer service. And then there's another game. And then we try to tease out why is it that there are different customers and therefore you need to offer different types of games. And I tell you, the commercial designers are so interesting. They even give you types of customers, customers who are always on the handphone and you can't get your attention, customers that come with a whole big family and they want to reserve the whole place and the family members are not there. So how do you handle customers like this? So as uh, these commercial games progress, they put in more educational stuff that I could use, all right? So basically, the rules of the game for a successful learning game <laughs> to happen in, or, in order that they will learn from that game is that we need to develop games that are cost-effective. I'm not asking you to come up with a game that uses the virtual world and you need a million dollars to develop it, no. I'm asking you to leverage on existing games out there. I can give you 200 game titles. All right, go look out there, see which one you can use as a trigger to get them excited, and then after that is your lesson. All right, so we are only using it to leverage, not to use the game wholesale. On the other hand, if you want to build your own games, you can build your own games using ready templates like I told you just now. We could use PowerPoint slides. We could use certain game builders that are already done for us. Okay, there are a lot of software companies that put in this in the school's learning management system. All right, Ask and Learn is one example. And uh, five years ago, when I got Ask and Learn to come and do it with my trainees, um, it wasn't that uh, popular. It didn't like quite hit off because teachers, um, new teachers generally are quite uh, conscious of how to, you know. Uh, deliver a point, how to develop the point, how to explain it. So, um, quite uptight about using games. But now, my trainees go out there, they use lots of games. Alright? Um, 
another example of a game that you can use a template that is available and is free. All right, it's on the internet. That's called Fling the Teacher. If you all would just put your, get your attention there to that screen, um, Saleh will show you how we play the Fling the Teacher. Okay, this is basically a game. Actually, before that, he skipped. You can actually choose the type of hairstyle, color, skin color, and everything else. And then they can start playing. So this is just a simple quiz, all right, that asks you, which of the following equations and then you've got to answer. Okay, carry on. Two. Yep. Okay. And this tone, you don't have to create, it's there. You just put in your questions and answers. And look at this. <coughs> okay. <coughs> hey, give us some wrong answers, please. <laughs> He wants to hurry, hurry, get all the answers correct because then you see the last part, the last part of the reward. Okay, I shan't bother you. Sally, go ahead. Alright, when he plows through all these questions and get them all correct, you will see the last part which is very exciting. Okay, while he's doing this, this is this is available on the internet, it's free. Uh, I have your email addresses, right? I'll send you the link because I don't believe in giving you the, the link and then you'll copy down and then short of something and then page not found. See, so what is this Dr. Ko doing? Okay, so I'll give you the link. I've got all your email addresses. I'll give you the links to all these. You just click and go. Alright? Okay, that's what happens when you get all the answers correct. Five. Four, three, two, one. Sadistic, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is one game that you don't have to do, it's there. And this is only one example. There are probably ten games out there. Alright, um, actually you should show them all the 10 different things you send Anyway, I'll send you the link, you go in there, the, all the 10 links there, there are demos. So you go and see the demos and choose which one you're going to use for your lesson. Alright, so that's what I mean when I say we build this game through ready templates. Alright, we don't have the expertise, no time, no money, this is the best way to go. Alright, but what is critical is we must develop games that is for our audience and for our topic. All right, that means we customize according to what we are teaching. This third step is something which is so important that we must emphasize. All right, why are we doing all these fun things? We, we have lots of laughter, lots of fun, high energy level, but when they walk out the door, we don't want them to walk out not learning because the whole purpose is learning. So remember that you must always unpack. That's the most important thing. You must always unpack and follow up every teaching moment, every key learning point. Meaning, when let's say when somebody got an answer wrong, we must always address that wrong misconception, I mean that wrong answer, and we must explain why it was wrong. And that's your teaching moment, okay? So, um, sometimes we forget that, and uh, we forget to do the unpacking part, and then we say, I uh, waste time, all these games. It's not true. They are very powerful if we do all these. So remember to unpack and capitalize on teaching moments. And when we unpack the games, we have more knowledge out of it, right? Uh, and of course, in, like in every lesson, any other lesson, we always need to recap the key learning points and make sure the debrief, the debrief is very clear, all right? And then we can address the questions and concerns. And this competitive environment that we build in the class can be really, really good. All right, can be quite fun. And because, you know, there's peer pressure, every time you get it wrong, ah, your peers all look at you, then you are then you feel bad, you go back and make sure you pay attention, you read through your notes before you come for the next competition, right? So a little bit of peer pressure, all right? And of course, usually we want to know whether our kids are learning or not. Evaluation is part and parcel of all good <coughs> lesson pedagogies. 
right. So um, when I get the games, I'll be emailing you. But like I say, if it is the commercially available games like uh, Dino Dash and all that, they're quite easy to play. You don't need a lesson on it. The kids are very intuitive. All right, you just go click to Yahoo. Lots of games, really loads. Easily 100, 200 games there. Again, I'll send you the uh, links. And uh, when there are quizzes, the quizzes can be any of these. These are quizzes, okay? An example of how we can play a, a, a quiz is this. You tell them, all right, everybody, get ready your paper and go. Can you please, please click go for us? Okay, can you see that one? It is just your PowerPoint slides of filling the blanks. And what I did was, I just do an auto timing so that it rolls on and on and on. How come this one doesn't work? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it rolls on and on and on. And everybody has to keep very quiet, pay attention, write down the answers. And that's how you get them to do the quiz and be on task. All right, of course, some of you say, what's the difference between a worksheet and this? Different. Right, this is just a worksheet, right? But you just get them to do it like this and you time it depending on how fast or how slow your students are. And let them do, 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 and then they hand it. All right, so this is an example of how we can give them a quiz, okay? Um, we have got more exciting games, I'll show you along the way. Uh, now we'll just go back to where we were. All right, next slide, please. Okay, and uh, so you realize that when we want to do all this, we need to use, uh, we need to give them a scenario, we need to tell them what's the issue, all right? And then we give them real life examples, we build into our games. And uh, when we are doing all this, you find that, um, Learning is really fun. So if you have the privilege of having a classroom like this, where the students can go and do the uh, learning center style, all right, then let them do it. They score points at each station, and they go. And you say, hey, crazy, uh, you think every school has got these facilities like NIE? Don't have? All right, do manual. All right, do manual. Do your manual, uh, manual as in like you got your laptop down there, and then they just go, and then they score points, next. All right, they go and do. So they go from station to station. Um, I have done all this in class with real students. Let's take a look. Uh, hyperlink there. All right, this is an example of uh, what we did with this class. All right, so one side is the game master, the other side is the players. So this is a typical classroom where you do it in a manual way. All right. What I did was I hit all the hit all the uh, questions into this box where they got to mm -hmm. and then they dig out the questions. All right. So this is one example. This manual. You don't have your IT facilities in the classroom, so you just dig out and they go and paste it. Do that. All right. And they learn that way. Okay, another one later you're going to look at is the speed. You will come. Sorry. Fast forward a bit. Uh, this is another one which I like very much. Alright, what we did was it is just your normal snake and ladder game. But we want it to be in the center, yes. Alright? that we create this environment so that 
we will use teaching moments to send home certain points. So we can use it as a trigger, we can use it as a revision, we can use it for um, clarifying questions. Because how many of us goes to a class and say, any questions? And then usually no questions, it becomes a rhetoric question. All right? So really, I think we should reach this stage where we are gaining to use games. Okay? So let's see what else can we do. Okay? So we can use it for introduction, for engaging them, for acquiring new content, okay, for critique, okay, for evaluation of learning, for reflection, for revision. If you are wondering how you can use it for acquiring new content, I'll show you at the end of today's session how I built in this, um, I call it my e-learning package, but it's actually not, not e-learning package, it's just a training centre where you go in and then you go into the topic and then there'll be two person talking. And in the conversation, you pick up the content. Alright? So sometimes we teachers have to learn the real TLLM. Right? Talk less, huh? learn more. Okay. Yeah, let's carry on. Okay, so these were the these were how I, I started off with all the board games. Uh, sorry, all the CD ROM games. Alright? So after having fun at this kind of CD ROM games, I discovered that the uh, there are some games that are very, very useful, alright? Because they are interesting, stimulating, encourages lateral thinking, definitely capture attention of students, and students respond better to games, alright? So uh, in a way, we can use games as an indirect instruction, okay? How I teach profit and loss concept uh, in accounting, I will show you how I use Lemonade. Alright, so there are online games, alright, available on the internet, like, like just now I show you, uh, the Diner Dash. Okay, there are offline games in CD-ROM, like your, your Roller Coaster Tycoon, there are board games, etc, 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 no end. Alright, so for Lemonade, um, what I use for this game is, it is very easy to use. You see, the, the thing is that we don't want students to have to spend time trying to figure out how to play the game. It's very intuitive and there are so user-friendly calculators and all that ready for them. That's the beauty of this game, it's inbuilt. And when they key in any decisions, whether they want to buy advertising, uh, market research info, whether they want to uh, decide on how much to buy, they've got to go and do their market research, do their weather forecast, and, and then they make all these decisions. And when they have made all these decisions, they will start their lemonade stand business. Okay? Lemonade stand, they are, they are plenty. The first time, five years ago, they had lemonade stand. Then they went on to Lemonade Tycoon. Now they got Lemonade Tycoon 2, Lemonade Tycoon, they keep upgrading. Alright, and the latest Lemonade Tycoon is so good that you have to decide where you want to position your kiosk. And you, it's a whole town, you know, then you decide whether you put your kiosk here or here. Here you pay more, la, more traffic, more, and you want to position your kiosk there, you pay less. Alright, so it's so exciting and for a business teacher like me, when I teach marketing, I teach um, uh, where's your place, location, pricing strategies, to me this is fantastic, alright, I don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? So, um, these are lemonade stands which my students will take their students through so that they can all calculate costs, calculate profits, etc, etc. I'm asking her to hurry because yeah, I, I would like to give you more time to actually go around and experience the games, okay? And I like this one, the gazillionaire and the, uh, this, this, this game because when I was teaching economics, now it's so difficult to get people to understand, especially if they are teaching O-level economics, they don't understand all this labour union thing and, you know, negotiation and all that. This game is so interesting, um, it, it actually has got two planets, alright, so these people from this planet want to buy certain goods and then you discover that on this planet they are selling goods at a cheaper rate so you buy them, you rocket them over to this planet so you make money from the difference in price so at first they will play the game level 1, they just buy and sell, buy and sell then no fun right, level 2, they are allowed to bring in customers, passengers sorry passengers on board the rocket and they find they make more money that way so they start to, wow, happy, go and market it and get more passengers on board the rocket to move to the other planet. And guess what? One fine day, the crew went on strike. <laughs> and then you are stuck with your customers. And then you are stuck, you know what to do. And then your customers want to sue you. And then you have got to go to arbitration court to go and settle. So, so these are very good simulations, which I didn't do it at all. 
All right, I discover it on the net and I just uh, happily click, click, click. But the beauty of it comes when you do the bridging. So we teachers need to do the bridging. If you leave it to them to just play from the games alone, they won't learn. All right, we have to help to do that scaffolding, the bridging, so that we can then say, hey, so what did we learn from this scenario? Okay, and then you can teach your staff and they'll be interested to listen. All right, uh, yeah, this is the game that I was telling you about with the weather forecast. Yep, the tutorials are structured actually. So, actually, if you want to, you just leave them to play the game. But I think we, the teacher, breathe life into all these. We, the teachers, breathe life into our textbooks. All right, so we also do this for them. Okay, um, next one. Uh, okay, this is the gazillionaire. Okay, uh, this is the entrepreneur's one, the tycoon series. Okay. I'd like you to see um, how we can, okay, some of us have to do field trips, right? And because of, um, I don't know, budget constraint, manpower constraint, you know, you've got a ratio of 1 to 20, all right? So sometimes you cannot find a partner to take your class out, all right? And then you say, no, I think I don't want to deprive my class of it, I'll take the whole class out. But you need to go and beg another colleague and say, hey, please come with me, you know, so that I can fulfill the 1 to 20 ratio. So I have come up with a suggestion on how we can do a virtual game. And this is what we have. Okay, I have built this um, virtual, virtual uh, game, all right? And each of this is actually a virtual field trip. Okay, let's, for example, click on Changi Airport. Okay, and what happens is, if you click next, all right, what happens is we have this uh, lady welcoming her friend, all right, so we have this scenario here, all right, and then you will probably, when you use this in class, you probably get somebody to be the role play, the person to do the role play, all right, so you go. Uh, anybody want to join it, do this, you want to read out? Hi, hi, my name is Ji, welcome on board. I am your tour guide for today. Our first destination of the day will be Changi Airport. Yeah, and at this point, I'll make the whole class that when you see any tourist destination, I want the whole class to shout. So the whole class will go, Changi Airport! Okay, next. <laughs> Alright, um, and then next, yeah. Then we go on and then we, we take them through. Carry on, carry on. So at each of these points, when they click on it, they can actually go through the, um, the, the tourist spots. Alright, carry on. So now she's going to uh, meet Ivan. All right, and Ivan say, hey, oh, boy, this is terrible. English teachers close your eyes. All right, <laughs> carry on. All right, so, you know, this is how we can then connect tourism in Singapore. Okay, can we get out of this? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know whether I should show them. Okay, I'll show you very quickly my virtual game, which is work in progress. All right, this virtual game is something which I am um, still working on. Uh, before this, sorry. This virtual game is something which I'm working on where I, yeah, this EBS training center, which I told you just now that I have got this game where you can then um, do e-learning. So for example, if you want to uh, learn something about, yeah, you can go anyone, you can go to the uh, hotel industry, you can go retailing, all right? Then what happens is that all my content is embedded in the lesson. Oops, we, we are still, okay, let's try. Yeah, okay. Um, all the, uh, yeah, so you go, you click the, you click, okay, anyone, anyone, yeah. So these, these are what they do after they have gone through the e-learning package. You will then have to do the snap machine. Okay, I tell you very frankly, you know when you get to start with games? When you get to start with games, how many of you did blog, blogging last time? Blogging. You did blogging, right? Last time you did blogging, right? Then you've got those nice interface, right? What do you do when you have those nice interface? You go back, you do a right click, copy, you paste onto your own, and then you get that. Do you know that trick? Alright, this is what we did. We go and look at a game, very exciting game, we right click, copy, paste the whole thing there, and we just change the questions according to what we want to ask. So like in this case, yeah, in this case we want to ask a question that's related to our EBS. We, we customize the game for ourselves. Alright? Okay, exit. Alright, so what we do is we, we try to um, build the game such that it's very interactive and the, and the students can then play and learn 
from it. Okay? Yeah, carry on. Okay, another activity is the drag and drop type of activities. We normally ask them to get the retailers and then we ask them to do drag and drop. If you take the drag and drop at the top there, alright, you will ring him at the top. It's hyperlinked to um, yeah, to, to this financial literacy games that I have for the students. You can click anyone. Yeah. Okay, anyone. Yeah. And then <coughs> these are the games that we then play with students. Alright? So we have got all these resources to help teachers make learning fun. Alright? So you can spread this over your two years that you are teaching them the syllabus. Okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have covered using CDs, using online games, using game templates, using virtual field tricks, and using the virtual training center, which I told you I'm developing. Okay, and when we put more into it, it will be available for a lot of people to use. For now, I would like you to just, those who are looking at me, to just turn around and look at that very exciting one. Alright, that one there, because that one there has involves two players. So, your students can sit and play as player one and player two. Okay, so you see these two fellows in prison, so they have got to answer the questions, and then by answering the questions, they get to move out of the cage. Okay. So basically, they are just quizzes, right? You realize? But because this one is two players, so two person can fight, strategize how to get out, you see? So you can pair them up. So for a normal tech class, when you pair them up and play this, they'll be very excited and playing. Okay? Okay, thanks Eugene. So later if you want to save the template, bring your thumb drive, go there, save your template. Alright? I'm not sure if we can upload this template for you to download, but um, maybe we can, yeah, we can try. Uh, another game you'll look at is there. Alright? Do you want to Yeah. This is a drag and drop game. So let's see what happens. Alright? So basically, we just want them to recognize the definitions and all that. You ask them to do a drag and drop activity. So it's just drag and drop. Uh, just now, my Asian penny is more exciting because I paid money for that one. This one is free. Okay, this is homemade. Alright? Just now, you saw that, that one, the, the colorful Asian penny one, that one, drag and drop. It's very nicely done now, but I paid somebody to do the graphics. Alright, and this is a very interesting hangman game which a lot of students love it. And it's very good for recap. At the end of the lesson, you want to recap and say, okay, so what are the key learning points we did today? Alright, so they can do this. Alright, hangman game. If they get all the answers correct, the poor fellow will be. Okay? So if you like it, you want the uh, template, go grab it later. Alright? Uh, last but not least, this is how I customize my game for accounting. Instead of tic tac go, it is tic tac no. Alright? So it's up to your creativity. And some effects are there if you, if you, if you go and copy it. Alright? Some effects are there already. And of course I use kaching because that's my subject. Alright? <laughs> I teach accounting. So the question is down there, alright, what is the entry to record uh, a computer bought by the business? So the answer is correct, and then you can get to plot your zero or cross, depending on which team you are at. And you go on and play and have your own. Yeah, just look at one more. Okay, then the score. I'm leaving! Okay, and so on and so forth. Okay. And you know the rules of the game. Once you get zip this way or this way or this way, I can have been a payment drama. Thank you. For for this one, all the sound effects are all there already. So again, you just download the template. You change your questions at the bottom. You can change to your account, your your geography question, history question, music question. Okay. So um, let's carry on and look at um, how all this inspired. Uh, me to do more things. Okay, let's see. Uh, um, 
Because we do all this, we realize that our students learn better, they can retain better, we grab their attention. That move will tell you that you must grab their attention first before they will learn. Um, so they can understand better, hopefully, by playing the diner dash. All right, when they see their customer's face getting black when they are not served. All right, this is really interesting. And we get them to uh, you know, go through the metacognition. And of course, they play in a group and we can actually use a lot of um, class-based activities. Okay? Right, so um, yeah, all right. This, this person tells us all the benefits and all these I will upload onto um, the, the web so that you can then read through and be convinced that we need to do all this in order to engage our stu students in learning. Okay? Right, so all this motivation stuff. Okay. I think you should be convinced by now, I hope. Okay, so. Then what do I do in my class, my accounting class, other than using ready-made games, sometimes I ask them to create games. All right? An example of creating a game using PowerPoint is as follows. Do we have some here? Um, I ask them to create games, all right? but first I gave them the, uh, the uh, ideas first. All right? So I take them through step by step through Blackboard. I gave them the ideas of which games that they can use and ask them to critique the game. All right. So after they have they have gone through the games and they've critiqued the games, I say, fine, you critique all this. This is your checklist. This is your wish list. Now you create a game fulfilling this checklist. You, you are so good in critiquing. So now you. So uh, what we do is we get them to go into this game sec section. All right, which I need to thank uh, the two beautiful ladies behind that, Eva and Sally, who has given me support to do all this and upload them on Blackboard. Okay. Um, yes, again, research shows you that if you, if you were to use just lecture, you only retain 5%, but you get them to do more, all right? Discussion group practice by doing, it increases, last but not least, immediate use of learning. All right, once you have immediate use of learning, that's it, 90%, okay? So, um, yes, we, we, we do a lot of game shows as well in our classrooms, and we let them play the role of game masters. Okay. So usually, uh, yeah, the kids get very, very excited. Constructive noise is uh, all right, I hope. Uh, by now, our principals are very, very, uh, yeah, very broad-minded. Okay, we do upload all our stuff onto our portal. This is called the WEBS portal. Uh, EBS stands for Elements of Business Skills. All right? And um, uh, yes, I, I, I always emphasize, let's build an authoring all right, so everybody gets to go and do it. Okay. Um, yes, so this is a summary of uh, today's session where I started off by saying that we develop most playable and cost-effective games. All right, we build these games using ready templates, work smart, okay? And, but of course, it's critical that you must make sure that it is customized for your audience and it is purposeful game. Uh, but most important, unpack and follow up so that there's more knowledge. And recap the key learning points, address the concerns, and evaluate whether the students have learned. All right? So you will now be able to go around and look at every game. There are more games. There are like 10 games per station. Uh, and uh, if you want to use your thumb drive and take away the templates, you are most welcome. Um, any questions? Okay. Yes? Yes? If we don't have our thumb drives, is this downloadable somewhere? Yes, it's downloadable from the web. Except that you have to create your own questions. Fine, I'll give you the I'll give you the links. We can download these games and you just okay. Certain things are not. Certain things like this one, the game builder there in the corner, you have to take our template because we build it. It's not available on the internet. This one, this one I think downloadable from the internet. Okay, but they're very small files. Okay, and the one down there, uh, yes, you, you have to search. So I will give you Content Generator. Content Generator has got 20 games. Okay? We will email you all the links. Make sure you are registered and we have your email address. Yes, if you are registered, we'll give it to you. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay.
Okay, if you want to insert other characters, then you must use mine. Um, I'll show you my celebrities here. Okay, you have to, like for example, you want to insert your other characters. Okay, you can use this one. This celebrity game, you, you, you can put your own, you just write it, copy, paste. You can you paste this guy, this guy, this guy. It's up to you. And, and, and the, the whole template is already linked, alright? So you, you don't do anything. How do we play the game? Alright, you can use the same instructions. Alright, tic tac toe. You group your class, this side and this side, right? The smiley and the pirates. Okay, and then you tell them the rules of the game. You either get this or you get this. Although a lot of people know tic tac toe, but you want to be sure. Okay, then you explain how to get the game. Alright, and after which, once you play the game, you say, go! Then you choose. Alright, again, whatever you put on the first page will be linked to this page already. So if you have replaced it with, uh, who you want to with? George Corbin. Then you will see George Corbin's face. Okay? Then you ask, okay, which one do you want? Anybody? This guy, okay? Okay, then what happened? Then we get the students to role play and read up. Okay? Who wants to be David Beckham? Quickly, somebody, David Beckham? Anybody, your class so un. Okay, so you get somebody to roll play Beckham. Anybody? Okay. Big for us. To train for the World Cup, I bought these gym equipment worth $5,000 three years ago. These equipment were expected to last me for five years, but I don't use them anymore. Okay, so you ask the class. Do we believe that he's making a loss of $1,000 if he sells it to you, to the Garanguni man? What's your answer? Do you agree with Beckham? How many of you say yes? Put out your hands. Hello? How many of you say no? Okay. More say no, is it? Okay, listen, huh? Okay, that's a correct answer. Then, then, some people who are very good will say, no, Joe, I disagree. That's where you're, you move them up, critical thinking, lah. The, the, the almost answer no uh, is uh, for GC O, o level answers. Alright, then after that you get some students say, no, Joe, I disagree. Why you disagree? Look, as long as David Becker, the celebrity, has used, has touched that equipment, I can auction it for hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> See? Alright? Okay, one last one. Uh, uh, wait, I'll give you I'll give you another one. Huh? Let me Okay, who wants to be Rosie and who wants to be uh, Pachuca? Come on, be sporting. Otherwise, I don't show you. <laughs> can, can I have a Pachuca quickly? Thank you. Rosie, who wants to marry him? <laughs> Come on, can we have a Rosie? Ladies. Rosie? Rosie, yeah, Bank owns me $12,000 for a renovation job I completed at the beginning of the year. Should I record that we have earned the money? Of course not. We haven't received the money from him yet. If we record it, people will say we are making big money. Wow, the star search here. Okay, so, thank you. What's the answer? Do you agree with Rosie? Having rose me twelve thousand dollars. So did we earn that money or not? Then Rosie said cannot. Okay, what is the answer? Yes or no? How many of you say yes? Put out your hands. Okay, how many of you say no? I don't agree with Rosie. Only one person. All say yes. Okay, if you say yes, you hear whether you got it right or wrong. In accounting, we teach them to recognize a transaction when it happens. All right, whether you collect money or not, that's a different story. Then you open your your accounts receivable account. All right. See, I've got an accounting student there. <laughs> so this is an example where I can give you the template. You just go and change the face that you want to change, change the questions that you want to change, and use them as teaching moments. 
Okay? So gone are the days when we have boring PowerPoint slides that go like what I did just now. Instead, you have this sort of scenario where you can then capture students' attention and learning can happen. Okay? Thank you and enjoy yourself going around. Do your physical work. If you have any doubts, you can email us. For lecturers, please contact us if you need help in building uh, games for your